Hello, good evening, buhay. This is your channel, and I am Sir Chat. Hello, good day, Mubuhay. This is your channel and I am Sergia, ready to serve you with another informative and talkative session about English language. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while. Medyo matagal tayong nawala sa eksena dahil nga sa maraming ginagawa sa eskwelahan at sa ating mga buhay-buhay. But what's important is that we are here again okay, to give you an informative session about writing. So this time, our focus is on writing skills. Okay, because we believe that in our workplace and in our generation today, writing is very important. Because most communication that we do through the online class is, of course, through creation of output. It's through the production of essays, production of letters. Okay? Like if you would like to apply for a job, if you would like to resign, if you would like to request, you need to write a letter. Not only that. Okay, most examinations in college, and especially also in high school, require you to write an essay. Now, it shows that writing is a necessary skill because this will make a big difference when you are relating a message to someone else. Now, in this session, we shall talk about the different errors, or should I say the common errors that most um, students, based on my personal experience, are committing when they write an output. So, ano-ano nga ba itong mga kadalasang pagkakamali na, of course, hindi naman sinasadya at dapat natin matutulang for us to correct it because I believe it starts with awareness. Okay? Correcting yourself starts with the awareness and acceptance that you committed a mistake. So, in here, we are going to list down one by one these common errors and we are going, of course, to suggest some tips, such as some techniques, and how we can correct, or should I say, a big word, combat this errors from occurring again. So bear with me as we list them one by one. Are you ready? Of course you are. Okay, let's start with this one. The first one, the first common error that I see from time to time. From time to time, every time I check um, essay type of test, every time I check letters, not only from students, also from um, professionals, okay? This one sounds correct. Will going, it sounds correct, no? But um, this one is actually ungrammatical. So, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng ungrammatical? When I say ungrammatical, it does not conform with the rules of Grammar, because according to the rules of grammar in English, will should be followed by. Not only should it must be followed by the base form of the verb. Pag sinabi natin base form, eting mga verbs na walang s or es, walang d or ed. It's the original spelling. Like if your verb is go, it's go. It's not goes. Okay. If your verb is decide, the base form is decide, not decides not decided, not deciding. So we do not uh, attach any uh, suffixes to our verbs, okay? So that's what we call the base form of the verb. So I repeat when you are using the word will, okay, which actually indicates a future event, okay, this is used for future tense, it should be followed by a verb which should be in base form. Now, how do we correct will going? Instead of saying, I will going to deliver the fruits in the market, you may say, I will be delivering the fruits in the market. Instead of saying, she will going to buy fruits in the market, we could correctly say or grammatically say, she will go in the market to buy fruits. Okay, another a better version of this statement would be she will be going to the market to buy fruits. I repeat, for will going, it's ungrammatical. The correct one is either will go or 
will be going. Next is the word so. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. We usually uh, see the word so in most written out words. Just to know okay, that so is an informal okay, synonym of the four. Okay, why is it informal? When we speak about English, we use the word so in oral discourse. I repeat, the word so is usually, okay, uh, usually applied when we are engaged in an oral discourse. So when you write, is it okay to use so? It could be okay if you are just quoting from a dialogue, if you are just quoting from a speech delivered by someone. So that's the oral discourse put into writing. But if you are referring to conclusions, okay, if you are referring to um, summing up or giving the uh, effect of something, okay, or if you are referring to concluding a paragraph, concluding an essay, it's more formal. Okay, it's more correct to use the words therefore. Okay, with that, these are examples of words which we could use to replace the word so. So again, so is informal and usually applied for oral discourse. But for the purpose of writing, and if you want, to, you are engaged, or if you are engaged in uh, formal writing, it's better to use therefore. Next on line, another error in writing are punctuations. Okay, we will specify one when it comes to writing a letter, particularly a business letter. Usually, I could observe some professionals, some students using this semicolon as part of their Greetings as part of their salutation. Now, if it is, if it's an informal letter, we are not going to use a semicolon. If it's a formal business letter, definitely we shall not use a semicolon. So, what should we use as part of the salutation part in writing a letter? Eting kinatawag natin lihan. Eting tinutukoy natin na lihan. Like when you are going to write to your teacher a let an excuse letter, pag mag apply ka, kailangan mo ng application letter. If you will be reciting, of course, you need a resignation letter. So what are the correct punctuations to use? Now, for formal writing, like a business letter, so this, uh, this are the communications, these are the letters that we use in the offices, okay, when we are transacting business with our superiors, with our peers, okay? What punctuation should we use to make it formal? Instead of using this semicolon, we have to use this colon, this punctuation. Okay, example, we write, Dear Sir, colon. Dear Madam, colon. Dear Mr. Lopez, colon. Not semicolon. Now, if you are writing a friendly letter, uh, if you are writing, for instance, an informal communication, then you may just use simply a comma. Okay? That's what we learned when we were in elementary and high school. When we are writing a friendly letter, we could use a comma. So again, we do not use this semicolon in letter writing, in the salutation part. Instead, we could use colon or Come on. Aside from punctuation, we have another error when it comes to spelling. Madalas natin problema when we are writing. The spelling. Okay, speaking of uh, spelling, since uh, pinag-usapan na rin natin ang business letter, and I know uh, this uh, coming months, a lot of you will apply for a job, a lot of you will write a letter of application, so better be cautious, better beware about this punctuations and spelling. And now, as I was saying, spelling. What is the common spelling error that most students commit when they are, even professionals again, that most people commit when they are writing? 
Ito, may the desk kong nakikita. This is a common error that I see among the outputs produced by people. Math. Instead of using M-A-D-A-N, they opt to use in writing M-A-M, which is actually accepted, but it is informal. So which one is the formal one? When we deal about the, when we talk about formal writing, like academic writing, when you're doing research, when we are talking about business letters, you use the words madam or man. Okay, man spelled as M A apostrophe A M. So the punctuation apostrophe indicates the missing letter D. That you omitted letter D. So that is a representation. So this a form of uh, the word is still considered as formal and used in business writing. So again, instead of using M-A-M, which is informal, if you are engaged in formal writing, you use the word madam as in M-A-D-A-M or ma'am, which is M-A apostrophe A-M. Okay, another common error in writing, particularly a letter, is the organization of thoughts. Okay? When it comes to business letter, remember that we have this rule of writing immediately on the first paragraph your intent or your purpose in writing the letter. Like if you would like to request for something, state immediately. The other side would like to request for, or if your intent is to apply for a job, you state immediately. The other side would like to apply for the vacant position posted in. Or if you want to be excused in a class, you state immediately on the first paragraph of your letter, please excuse my child for being absent for today. Now, why do we do that? Why do we need to indicate immediately our purpose or intent when we write a letter on the first paragraph? Why do we need to avoid reading such as uh, before you state your purpose, diba? you have the salutation, dear ma'am, dear sir. And then after that, you would state greetings of peace, greetings of love. I hope you're doing well before uh, reading this. A message. It's because when it comes to business letter, we need to understand that people are busy people. That's why it's business. Which means that we need to indicate right away our intent because we need to save time. We need this uh, concern to be addressed immediately. Okay, what's the tendency if we uh, dilly-dally okay, when we write a letter? The tendency is that there's a possibility that the one who reads your letter might just miss what you want to say because maybe that person is rushing to do something, that person is hurrying, that person needs to do another task as part of his or her duty. That's why he just read the first few parts of your letter. And that's what we do actually. In reality, that's what we do when we read curriculum vitae. When we read letter, we don't read the entire piece. Okay, if you are an employer, you just read the intent. You just you are just looking for the purpose because you want to save time. So, in order for your letter to be addressed, in order for your concerns to be addressed immediately, state immediately your purpose on the first paragraph because we are dealing with busy people because they are business men. They are professionals with a lot of tasks to do. Next, another error in writing. Okay, so, ito madalas nakikita natin sa mga certificates. Madalas nakikita natin sa mga letters. Okay, madalas nakikita natin sa mga documents. When you write the name okay, of the signatory, you need to capitalize all the letters of the name. And below that, you are going to write the position just like this one and not this one okay in which you are just going to capitalize the first letters of the first names like the, the given name okay, the middle and the surname so if it's a signatory type of document 
Okay, if it's a document needing signature, if it's a formal document needing the sign of that person, you capitalize all the letters of the names and below that you write the positions. For visual effect, you may use the boldface format okay, to highlight more the name of the person and this time, no need for you to underline the name. Another, no need for you to uh, draw an underline above the name. And then th there you are going to indicate the signature. No, that's very wrong. So for technical purposes, okay, for us to be more technical and more visually correct when it comes to documents, just state the name and then below that the position. The name in capital letters, okay, and uh, you may have the option to uh, use the both base format to highlight more the name. Hey, last, okay, we are down to our last um, tip about writing in English. Okay, either a letter, okay, either a document, either a research. Okay, this last tip is, I believe, one of the most important things that we need to remember when we write. And that refers to organization of your thoughts. Wag tayong sabok pag tayo ay nagsusunod. Okay? Wag papunta sa west, papunta sa north, papunta sa east. Yung mga ideas natin. So, what do we do? What should we do in order to combat this one? We need to use outline. Okay? We need to use uh, this, what we call, topic, sentence, details, and closure format. We need to have a format in our mind, we need to have a framework that will serve as our guide as we write an essay or a paragraph. So we need to avoid mixing our thoughts in one paragraph, okay? When it comes to writing an output, a research, an essay, or a letter, you need to indicate one purpose per paragraph. Okay, this is done in order for you to be clear with what you want to say, in order for you to serve the clarity that your readers deserve. So, how do we use this what we call outline? So, for writing a paragraph, let's say for instance, your, your, our focus is just one paragraph, you may follow the format, indicate the topic sentence in which you are going to write your purpose, and then the details. Okay. And then the last sentence would be uh, a summary of uh, what you have stated from the topic sentence uh, up to the details or uh, a reiteration. You may just repeat what you have indicated in your topic sentence for emphasis. So again, topic sentence, detail, and then uh, closure. That's what we do when we write a paragraph. Now, when we are writing an output, Okay, an entire output, an entire composition, just like an essay. It's very important that you organize your thought using an outline. Okay, so you may follow the technique introduction, body, and conclusion. I repeat, introduction, body, and conclusion. So if it's an essay, okay, I read an output, an article, follow this format. Introduction, body, and conclusion. So, in the introduction, you are going to indicate your purpose, your intent. You are going to indicate the topic. Introduce the topic. That's why we call it introduction. In the body, indicate the details that will support your topic, your evidence. Okay? So, which is otherwise known as, uh, if it's, let's say, for instance, an editorial, an argument, indicate there your arguments. And last... Okay, which is what we call the conclusion. That's where we summarize everything that we have written in the entire piece. That's where we may indicate a challenge. That's where we indicate our own insights about what we have written. Just to conclude, just to close the entire output. There are many ways actually on how we could write the conclusion part in an essay. And I believe we could do that in another vlog because it will be a longer lecture about writing the introduction, the body, and conclusion. But our point here is that when we write, okay, when we write either a paragraph or an entire output, it's very important that, that you create your format or otherwise known as the outline. This is to guide you on what you are going to write. This is to organize your ideas okay, which you are going to put into writing and of course to give your readers the clarity they deserve. So at this point, those are just some of the common errors that we commit when we are writing in English. 
Remember this one, it's very important that we correct these errors in order for us to become a better writer. And a better writer means that your readers could understand what you want to say in your letter. And with that, you are relaying, relating clear messages to your reader. And that is actually an edge, not only in school, okay, in school if you are a student, but also in the workplace.